In today's tutorial, we're gonna see how to create this image in Photoshop and SketchUp. Let's get started. So for those of you that don't know, our Patreon page is now active, so you can uh, get this complete file and the complete video on our Patreon page. Uh, so many of you may know the model from our last video. It's the model from our Market Plaza done with a design partner here in Colombia. And basically what I want to do is now more of an illustration style. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to adjust the view. So the view uh, had some hidden geometry. So I just uh, went to unhide it. And second of all, I wanted to align it. I wanted it to be a very symmetrical classical image. So since this uh, design had like three main parts of the roof that were very nice in composition, uh, I, I lined them to the camera and then I exported a clay rendering. So for this clay rendering, I adjusted the safe frame that you guys can turn on in your, in your V-Ray options for it to be more of a portrait image and no, not so much of a landscape image. This was because it was it was gonna, going to enhance the, the verticality of the whole design. So as soon as I had this, uh, remember that for our clay renderings, what you, what you guys can do is you can uh, adjust the size of your rendering for, to more than 200, as you, as you guys can see in the camera, and set the material override option on, right? So you also want to export your object ID and your render ID options, and then you just render it. So this is how the final uh, image looks like. And what we are going to do now is export the lines, the lines file that we also have in our SketchUp model. So if you guys don't know how to export lines, you guys can go to the hidden line option and export the lines. For this image, I also exported the shadows and the textures. So if you want to export shadows, you just have to turn the shadows on in SketchUp and turn the lines off. As you guys can see here, I saved it all in the same folder and with the same name in, in for, for it to be in a big size, more than 2,000 to 3,000 pixels. And after I had all these images, I imported them into SketchUp. So you guys import your base renders, then you import your material ID and your alpha. And after you import these, we want to start importing our lines, our shadows, and our textures. Since these were exported in a different configuration, uh, I manually adjusted them. So uh, it wasn't that complicated because the same fr the safe frame of V-Ray let me know where it began and where it, uh, where it where it ended. So it adjusted perfectly. So you you want to adjust this, and I also recommend something that I did in this in this uh, project a lot. It was um, having specific layers for for every different group of things right so for this i had a uh, layers that were you know the base images but i also had the vegetation a uh, group for vegetation a folder for vegetation i also had a folder for entourage etc 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 so this is going to make your whole workflow much much more organized after i did this as you guys can see the base render of our of our, of our V-Ray clay rendering is a little bit too dark. It's, it's kind of bluish. So the first thing I did was uh, add, go to adjustment layers and add a black and white adjustment layer. This is gonna make everything black and white and eliminate all the blue hues that you have from the V-Ray clay rendering. And second of all, what you can do is adjust the brightness and the contrast, right? So I turned the brightness up with, a, with an adjustment layer I turned it all up and turned the contrast a little bit down. So as you guys can see, as soon as we turned the brightness up, everything looked much, much better. And I just did a quick sketch of what I wanted to do. So the red lines are, you know, of uh, vegetation I wanted to put, the grid lines I wanted to put, how the entourage of the, the people were uh, planning to be displayed in this image. So this is something I recommend you guys doing when you want to create an image, you know, just plan ahead what you want to do and what you want your image to look like. So as soon as we have this plan of the image and this base image, you know, adjusted, I turned up the brightness just a little bit because I thought it was also still too dark. 
and uh, with this shadows layer that I imported I also set the shadows layer to multiply when you set the shadow layer to multiply it looks much much better and I also wanted to take into account the previous illustration we had already done so we can you know more or less have the same language and the same uh, visualization style of the image okay so after we have this um, I proceeded to look for vegetation right so the vegetation part is very interesting and I think is the thing that I want you guys to leave from this video I want you guys to have the vegetation part very uh, embedded or the process very embedded in your own process because it's something that sometimes we don't do consciously and we just start importing vegetation from the back the front etc 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 so the way i organized this was i created three different folders the background vegetation the middle ground vegetation and the foreground vegetation so first i imported all the background vegetation i imported them um, and then i masked them out with the alpha channel that my v-ray uh, rendering gave me right next i proceeded to import the middle ground vegetation which which was the these ivy uh leaves and also some plants you also want to make sure that you have a vegetation that is from the same context right so we don't have we don't want to have pine trees with palm trees because they look very very different and they're from different places sometimes so this was uh this place is very close to the amazon so i had very tropical leaves and tropical plants and tropical trees so as you guys can see i'm importing all the middle ground vegetation and masking it out everything that i don't need i'm not deleting it i'm masking it out because it's a non-destructive workflow and after i create all of these groups of layers i i put them in a whole folder and now i'm inserting the uh the foreground vegetation so these are these two palm trees and these ivy leaves and for these ivy leaves i decided to use the clone tool which you can go with your by pressing s on your keyboard and i cloned a little bit more of ivy because i thought you know we could use some more in the middle part of the image After adjusting a little bit of the shadows that I thought didn't look, made the image look very, very dark and I think I churned them off because it didn't look as cool as I wanted to. I just wanted to have a very uh, soft color palette. I wanted to be the green, I wanted the green to have a lot of protagonism and I wanted the white also to have a lot of protagonism. So next I wanted to add the ant entourage and the elements. So I looked for market plazas in Google and I just downloaded about five to 10 images, which I think would uh, I could, could be useful for the image. And then I just, uh, with a mat with the lasso tool by pressing L on your keyboard, you can just select what you want from the image and mask out the rest, right? So I proceeded to do this with various images by pressing Control T on your keyboard. You can resize them. And I just, you know, did this process various times. And since all of these images had more or less the same color palette, which was very colorful color palette um, from different market plazas around the country, I I think it, it gave a nice tone, a nice color to the whole image. So as you guys can see here, I'm just repeating the same process over and over again. I'm, I'm importing, you know, main images, main images that have a lot of information to them. I'm masking them out and I'm lowering the contrast and lowering their brightness. So it doesn't have too much protagonism and they just sit in the background very nicely. And finally, what I did was just uh, darken the, the floor a little bit, a little bit so it could have a little bit of a distinction from the columns and everything else. Next, I decided to uh, adjust the crop of the image. I think uh, I wanted a little bit more sky. When you guys have a different, uh, more white space or more negative space, I don't know what you call it, um, in your image it just makes the image breathe much more like for example if i wanted to place a diagram on top of the image or place i don't know some birds place the sun it would look much more nice and it would the image would have a lot more protagonism it would be much more powerful than if you just crammed everything into the image right so that's why i decided to use the crop tool to adjust the canvas of the image 
And finally, what I wanted to do was, was import some textures. So the, uh, so the image could have a little bit more, uh, it could be much more textured and, be, and have a, a, an interesting look to it, right? So as you guys can see, if you want to get crazy, you can, you can change the color to whatever color you want. It's something that's uh, very used these days. It really depends on your taste. And then I imported some a rice paper texture into my image. These rice paper textures were downloaded from the site called called Spoon Graphics, right? So you guys can just type Spoon Graphics on Google and they have lots of awesome textures and these specifically I think were free textures that um, the guy from Spoon Graphics gave us. After doing this, we I just imported uh, also a grainy texture from Spoon Graphics and what I did with the screen texture to make it look like a paper texture was uh, applied a motion blur filter to it with a 90 degree, degree angle and as you guys can see it gave a lot of uh, vertical and verticality lines to it. And finally I just added a sun and finally I added an orange sun just to make it look like a more post digital image uh, but you guys can add some birds, add some mountains, whatever you want. It really depends on the image and the context of the image. Finally, what I did was just add a little bit of texture to it. Uh, I, maybe I wanted to add a little bit uh, more, um, you know, a more handwritten style. Since this was an image, image divided in three parts, as you can, you can see the three parts of the roof, I tried different things, which I didn't uh, stay with at the end. Fuck. I'm sorry, but um, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of traffic around. Um, so I tried different things, and this was more or less the final image that uh, we had left. So just as a quick reminder, I just want to make uh, sure you guys, uh, when you're working on your Photoshop images, you work on them with different groups of layers and different folders. Also, when you work on your vegetation, make sure you work on your foreground vegetation, it's different from your middle ground and your background vegetation. And finally, you can also add different textures to the image and different things that will give the image a little bit more of your taste or of your style. So this was the final result. I hope you guys liked it. If you want to see the full tutorial, the full two hour tutorial and the full uh, PSD file, you can go to patreon.com slash show it better to download it. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.